Hey everybody, Gage here from Sharp. Excited to have you with me today to talk about uh, an incredible company making some really exceptional knives. Uh, that being Rusen Hamono, a uh, knife manufacturer working out of the Echizen City area of Japan. We have five lineups available from Roos and Hamono, and we're going to talk about each of them. Uh, but before we get into that, we're briefly going to touch on the company history, um, some interesting facts, and the manufacturing process that they take their knives through. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into it. So as I previously mentioned, Roos and Hamono works out of the Echizen City area of Japan. This is an area renowned for its edge tool production and has a history that dates back uh, over 700 years. At that time, a very famous katana maker was in search of an area where he could find good iron ore and good water uh, so he could produce the highest level of katana or sword he possibly could, and he landed on the Etchison City area. This area now is home to a thriving community of bladesmiths and knife manufacturers, not the least of which, of course, is Rusen Hamono. Rusen Hamono is headed by Koji Masutani, who acts as the company CEO as well as one of the sharpeners. He is a third generation knife maker who took inspiration from his father and grandfather before him. Uh, his early life was spent around knife making and thus he ended up as a knife maker himself. Koji Masatani-san's father was born in the year of the dragon and they used this as inspiration for the company name where Ru translates to dragon and Sen to spring. They use the name uh, as inspiration for a lot of the designs on their blades um, and they describe uh, a dragon rising from a spring with water cascading down its uh, scales um, as a way to sort of interpret some of the uh, amazing patterns that they have on their blades. Now at first glance a lot of Roos and Hamono knives may come across as a factory made product. The fit and finish on these knives is second to none in my opinion even in comparison to all of the knives that we have here at the shop. Um, very very well well done, fit and finish, uh, beautifully, beautifully polished, both handles and blades, um, exceptional feel on the hand, um, but in fact, all Roos and Hamono knives are hand forged. So Roos and Hamono starts out with a small billet of steel, which is then put into a furnace to heat up. It is then taken from that furnace and hammered out into the basic knife shape using a spring hammer. This basic shape is then taken to the cold forging area, which looks very similar to the hot forging area, except there's no heat involved. This cold forging process further straightens the knife and adds some strength to the steel. So after the hot and cold forging process, they are taken to a stamp. And this is sort of where Roos and Hamono differs from a lot of other hand forged products in that they are stamped rather than cut out or sanded further into shape. In our minds, it's not a huge deal because uh, you end up with a, a, a much more consistent product um, and the knives still inherit a lot of those qualities from the hand forging process. So you're still getting a fantastic, fantastic knife with excellent, excellent fit and finish. So once the stamping process is complete, these knives move on to the beveling and sharpening process. And then of course also have their bolsters welded on and the handles fixed to the knives and shaped and polished down. All of these processes of course being uh, done by hand as well. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, we carry five lines from Roos and Hamono. Uh, they include the Bon Ten Ryu line made from VG10 with this beautiful black Damascus pattern featuring Wenge handles with a black pack of wood ferrule. Next, we've got the uh, Tengen Ryu uh, lineup, which we have two options for in terms of handles, uh, the Micarta lineup and the Maple lineup. Uh, these got, maple ones are super cool because they're made from Canadian maple and we're a Canadian knife shop, so that's pretty cool. Uh, next, we've got the Fukaku Ryu line, this guy here, made from ATS 314 steel. This is a steel that I was unfamiliar with before we brought these knives in, but through our research, we found out that it is somewhere in between a VG10 and an SG2R2. Um, very popular with barber shears because of its edge retention, and it is a little bit on the tougher side. Next, we've got the Blazin, and I guess finally, we have the Blazin lineup here. These are made from SG2R2, AKA Super Gold 2 stainless steel. Um, in fact, all of these knives are stainless steel, so they are a great option for anyone looking uh, for a low maintenance knife with great fit and finish and uh, looking for a very sharp, beautiful knife. So we'll go into a little bit more detail on each of the lineups here, and we'll start with the Bonten Ryu lineup here. So as I previously mentioned, they've got a beautiful octagonal Wenge handle that features a black pack of wood ferrule, VG10 stainless steel with a beautiful black Damascus pattern. 
These knives are uh, not the lightest knives that I've ever handled and certainly not the heaviest. Um, so I would put them sort of um, average in terms of their weight. Um, they are balanced slightly forward in the blade, uh, which is typical for most Japanese knives, which in my mind gives them a great feel in the hand, makes them really good performing knives. They are thin both at the spine and behind the edge, so really, really great cutting feel on these guys. And I find that the sort of rougher pattern on these will help food release a little bit easier from the blade than a very polished knife. From the Bonten Ryu lineup, we have five shapes, the Petty Knife, the Nakiri, the Santoku, and two Gyutos, one at 180 millimeters and one at 210 millimeters. Next, we'll talk about the Tengen Ryu lineup and we'll lump together the maple handle and the micarta uh, handle because they are exactly the same knife, just with different handles. Uh, these knives are probably the most similar to a sort of European or German feeling knife in the shop. They are balanced a little bit more towards the uh, bolster of the knife, so balance sort of more smack dab in the middle of the blade, which is not super typical for a Japanese knife. They are exceptionally beautiful knives with incredible, incredible fit and finish. The handles are beautifully polished down, very, very shiny, as is the blade, of course, as well. They're all sandblasted at the Rusin Himono factory. Um, so that gives you a really, really nice, shiny, almost mirror-like polish on these guys. Um, they have a really beautiful tsushimi or hand hammered finish to them. And that tsushimi pattern transitions into the bolster and also into the end cap of the knife, which is really cool, adds a little extra flair or pizzazz. And also feature a really, really nice Damascus pattern on them as well. So both of these lineups, whether with the maple or micarta handle, are made from VG10 steel, which is a stainless steel with a Rockwell hardness of around 60. Um, it, this may not be the highest that we have here at the shop, but you'll still experience really great edge retention from these. Um, and being a little bit on the softer side, they are less prone to chipping. So if you're looking for a knife that isn't super delicate, these are a great way to go. Uh, furthermore, because they are a little bit heavier, um, maybe you've handled Japanese knives in the past and been put off a little bit by how light they are. Um, these again are a great option. They've got a little bit more heft and weight to them. Um, so if you're more a fan of like the European German uh, feel to the knife, but you want a high quality uh, Japanese steel, these are a fantastic option. So the next lineup we're gonna talk about is the Fukaku Ryu series, which along with the Blazin series, which we'll talk about next, are the lightest of the offerings that we carry from Rusin Himono. These knives are forged from ATS 314 stainless steel, which again is somewhere in between VG10 and R2, and features a really, really beautiful Damascus pattern. We have... So we carry four knives from this lineup, the Petty Knife, the Nakiri, which has a really, really cool shape to it, unlike anything we've seen before, uh, the Bunka, which has a really cool reverse Tanto or K-tip on it, and a Gyuto 210 millimeters, which also has a K-tip or reverse Tanto tip on it. So you could also describe that as uh, like a Kritz K Gyuto as well. They feature a really, really beautiful octagonal shaped maple handle, uh, no ferrule on these guys, um, Again, like I said, very light knives overall, quite thin at the spine and very thin behind the edge. So if you're looking for a knife based purely on performance and you're not worried about it chipping or anything like that, you're confident in your abilities using a Japanese knife, uh, the Fukaku Ryu series is a fantastic option. Very similar to the rest of the lineups from uh, Rusin Himono, these have exceptional, exceptional fit and finish on them. Uh, the spines are very nicely sanded down. The choil is nicely sanded down. Uh, the handles have a really nice um, ergonomic shape to them so they fit really nicely in your hand. Uh, and of course, without any of those sharp edges, um, really, really comfortable to hold for a very long time. Much of what we said about the Fukaku Ryu series can be applied to the Blazin series as well. Uh, difference being, of course, the finish on the knives. So the Blazin series features a Nashiji finish rather than a Damascus finish, uh, made from a different steel type as well, known as SG2 slash R2, um, AKA Super Gold number two. Uh, this is one of my favorite stainless steels out there because I find that its edge retention is right on par with most other carbon steels. Um, they sharpen up quite easily in my experience um, and they of course are thin both at the spine and behind the edge as well so excellent excellent cutting feel very very effortless uh, cutting feel to these guys um, again uh, walnut handle uh, same shape as the Fukaku Ryu series so octagonal in shape uh, very nice ergonomic design that sort of tapers in towards the tang um, and again fit and finish on these guys is really exceptional as well spine very nicely sanded down choil very nicely sanded down 
balance point on these guys is a little bit further forward, as is the case with the Fukaku Ryu uh, series as well. Um, of course, being a slightly thinner knife, both the spine and behind the edge, these guys are going to be a little bit more on the delicate side. Um, so that's something to definitely consider if you are considering these knives. So the last thing that I wanted to talk about uh, in regards to the Rus and Himono knives is the packaging that they come in. Now this might not be a huge deal for all of you out there, but uh, I can say personally that getting a new knife and seeing the box that it comes in is one of my favorite parts of knife buying. And Rus and Himono certainly does not disappoint in this regard. The packaging and boxes that these knives come in is as beautiful as, as the knives. Um, they, uh, of course, will not be damaged during shipping because of this amazing packaging. Um, and it really makes uh, for a sort of wow factor if you plan to give the knife as a gift. These boxes open very, very elegantly to display the beautiful, beautiful knife. Um, it can be used as a storage option as well. And included in the box is both a certificate of authenticity, which is signed by hand by us before we send the knives out to you. And also a little bit, a little leaflet with some information about um, the etches in area and the Rusen Himono's uh, company history. So all in all guys, uh, Rusen Himono is, is quickly becoming one of our favorite makers here at the shop. They make exceptional knives, uh, both in terms of their performance, but also in terms of the uh, aesthetics of both the knives and the packaging that they come in, making for a really, really fantastic gift for both the home cook and the professional. If you have any further questions about knives made from Rusen Himono, uh, feel free to leave a comment down below and we'll make sure to respond to you in a timely manner. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more knife related content. And until the next video, stay sharp. <coughs> <coughs> <coughs>